Have you ever wondered how much you should eat in order to lose weight? Especially if you're a lady, especially if you are, if you've already had your kids or you're past the age of having kids. This applies to everyone, but I want to specifically address the group that it's hardest for them to lose weight. Hi, I'm Dr. Cynthia Clark. I'm an acupuncture physician and applied clinical nutritionist. I'm the creator of Energy Evolution, and I'm the president of Longevity Wellness. But here's a couple of things about me that maybe you didn't know. One is that I'm also an engineer, and when I was in graduate school to become a Chinese medicine doctor, I was a certified personal trainer, and I loved it. I wanted to study health as much as I wanted to study disease. And finally, if you've been reading my newsletters at all, you probably do know that I'm in training for my second Ironman competition this year. And one of the things that I've focused on during this phase of my training is losing some weight. You might think that that's easy when you're exercising so much, but I gotta tell you that I fall in that category of people that it's hardest to lose weight and I've had to do some different things. So the other morning I was in the gym and I heard these two ladies talking and they had a conversation that really touched my heart. One of them uh, had, it, Yom Kippur had just passed and one of them had said that she had just fasted for Yom Kippur. And then she said, it really isn't that big of a deal because I fast regularly. I, you know, I, I regularly skip meals. And the other one, it, 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 it actually got a little like, um, you know, like, oh yes, me too. I don't have, I usually don't have breakfast and I have a smoothie. And it, and it was a little bit of like comparing notes on how to go with food deprivation. And it touched my heart because for one thing, I knew that that's not the way to go about weight loss. And I know that that's why they're doing it. So I wanted to take a little bit of time and talk to you about why that doesn't work. So, um, and in fact, why it can be harmful over time. You've probably heard of crash diets or extreme calorie restriction. And that's, that's kind of what we think, right? Like eat less food and I'm going to lose weight. That that can work for a little bit of time, but ultimately what it does is it really causes some damage to your body that prevents you from losing weight over time. And that's really frustrating. <laughs> um, so starving yourself isn't only ineffective, but it can have serious consequences for your health. Specifically, there's part of your brain called the hypothalamus. And if you regularly restrict calories, then you cause a type of brain damage that makes it harder for you to lose weight and harder for you to have good emotions. By the way, one of the telltale signs that the hypothalamus might be da damaged is um, this person might experience shame quite a lot. So when you starve yourself, you're depriving your body of those essential nutrients it needs in order to function properly. This can lead to a weakened immune system, fatigue, and nutrient deficiencies, which is going in the exact opposite direction of why we're doing all this in the first place. We're doing it to be healthy, to have a great immune system. So remember that your body is like a car. It needs fuel to run efficiently. When you starve yourself, your metabolism slows down, making it even harder to lose weight in the wrong, long run. I'm gonna say that again. When you starve yourself, your metabolism slows down. There's a really great book called Younger Next Year that was written by a doctor and an old guy <laughs> um, that I read back around 2010. It really inspired me to be aware of what does actually spark my metabolism versus what slows it down. And basically not feeding myself is one of the big things that will slow it down. So. I want you to think of yourself as you've got this big engine, like think of yourself as a car. You've got this, this engine underneath your hood and gentlemen have a much bigger engine than ladies do. And the way that that bears out is it's a lot faster for them to lose weight. So if you have a loved one that you start on a weight loss program with and they are male and you are female and they lose weight faster than you, don't worry about it. That's just their body. That's their wiring. And there's a whole different equation that's working in you that's not working in them. And that is 
we ladies, we need to build more muscle to burn more fat. So muscle burns fat. It also weighs more than fat. So we start walking into this really tricky situation where um, I'm going to say the scale lies. Now, I'm an engineer and I believe in numbers and numbers are very important. But here's why I say that. Because the scale, the scale will stay the same day after day after day, even and especially when the engine under your hood is growing a lot. So if you're increasing muscle, that increases the pounds. If you're burning fat, that decreases those pounds. If muscle weighs more than fat, and we want muscle because muscle helps keep us keeps a strong, healthy frame. It also strengthens our immune system and makes us more resilient to falls and crashes. So if we want muscle and muscle weighs more than fat, and we're on a program that's building muscle and burning fat, that scale can stay exactly the same for weeks leading into months while your body is going through a major metamorphosis underneath the hood. You're building a whole new engine. Now it's important to get the right metrics and there are special scales that can help you see your fat to muscle ratio. Um, and it's also important to stay hydrated in order for those scales to be accurate. So this is the situation. You have to have accurate metrics and your scale is going to quote unquote lie to you. It's telling you the truth, but it's only telling you this like really big picture. It's like if you're looking at the car, well, the car looks the same, even if the entire engine has been replaced. Another problem with calorie restriction is that it very often leads to emotional eating. You feel deprived and when you finally do eat, you might binge on unhealthy food, negating any progress you made. I want to add further to this. It's not just emotional eating. It's also looking for the calories. You need calories in order to uh, burn fat in order to build muscle. The problem is where those calories come from really matter because if you're eating uh, high junk food, inflammatory food, you're actually going to be adding more inflammatory weight. You're going to be feeling worse. You're not going to feel like this is worth it. You're going to feel probably bad about yourself because you just had McDonald's and um, you're going to be working against yourself. Yes, you'll get some of those calories in if you're doing, you know, like an endurance cardio event and you're severely nutrient deficient, maybe that is the right thing for you to do in the moment. Skip the bun, you know, eat the terrible, terrible <laughs> quote unquote meat that's on there. Um, but, you know, that, that might be a, a, a situation that you can't possibly avoid. That has happened to me. That has happened to me like once in a decade, but it's happened to me. What works a lot better is making sure that you are well fed throughout the day. So that means having food throughout the day, not making a game of deprivation. Because I gotta tell you, in 21st century America, we are the most overfed and undernourished country on the planet. Crash diets can also damage your relationship with food. Food should be enjoyed and nourishing, not seen as the enemy. When you starve yourself, your body shifts from breaking down, your body starts to break down muscle for energy. So you're, you're like, it's like dismantling your car and selling the engine for parts so that you can get money to put gas in the tank. Like this is a broken equation. You're not gonna get to where you wanna go. This can leave you looking skinny fat and weak, not the toned healthy appearance most people desire, but it's actually a malnutrition starvation look. Twiggy back in the day was a good example of that. So what's the solution? Instead of star starving yourself, focus on making healthier choices and specifically eat those great calories earlier in the day. Every single person that I've ever met that's binging after dinner is calorie deficient from earlier in the day. They didn't load up earlier, so they're looking for the calories because their body knows it's getting ready to go into an overnight fast. And if it doesn't have the right amount of calories, then your brain is gonna suffer. It's gonna wake you up in the middle of the night to say, hey, go get you know peanut butter and jelly sandwich and chocolate milk. Um, whatever your 
middle of the night like go to sugar crash meal is. So you want a balanced diet that's rich in whole foods. You're looking for vegetables, you're looking for fruits, you're looking for good proteins. And um, I am a big advocate of gluten-free because I don't see many people that respond well to it. Um, but there's a lot of other grains that are great for you, like quinoa and amaranth. So these will provide the nutrients that you need to balance your body and keep your metabolism humming because you gotta keep it rolling. Combine that healthy diet with regular exercise to create a sustainable long-term approach to weight loss. And if you are very serious about weight loss, then I have to tell you that the most important exercise you can do is resistance training. That's gonna seem totally out of left field if you've not heard this before. It's like, ah, I'm trying to lose weight. I should spend 14 hours a day on the elliptical machine. <laughs> Endurance cardio actually shifts our <clears throat> our bodies, it uses up our adrenal energy. And when we do that, we can actually wind up with stuck weight in our mid bellies and our mid sections. So what is better is to make sure you're prioritizing your resistance training to build the muscle and then add your cardio onto that. You're looking for 20 to 30 minutes a day of cardio at least five days a week. If you can get it in nature, that is the, the A plus, that's the, the siren song. Um, especially if you can get it in the sunshine, there's a particular benefit. There's a special kind of light that we only, uh, only have access to at sunrise. So if you can combine your, your exercise routine with exposure to sunrise sunshine, then this is incredibly beneficial for you. You can check out the work of Dr. John Ott, O-T-T, for more information on light and how it affects us. So um, remember, there are no shortcuts to healthy, fit body. Starving yourself might seem like a quick fix, but in reality, it's a path to nowhere. So, you know, take your time, do it right, eat your great meals throughout the day. Uh, it's whether you're doing, even if you're doing intermittent fasting, right, then uh, make sure that you're getting enough calories in during your fasting window. It's not healthy to only try to subsist on 500 calories a day. We aren't designed for that over time. Um, those are things that we can do for a short period of time, but, but if you really want to build a healthy body, then focus on changing your diet and your lifestyle so that you're getting enough food. I'd love to work with you to help you design this. You can also check out, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out the last video I, that I did, which was about using ChatGPT to create a meal plan for yourself. I am Dr. Cynthia Clark, and that's good medicine, and I hope you have a really, really great day. Remember, don't forget to subscribe.